2008. That what it instigated at that time the plan to crush once and for all the opposition. At the time, and I was witness to a briefing in a very sensitive place in this country, I was there when the king came in and asked for a permission or at least a sanction. The British at the time, they were very adamant to let him not to go too far and advise him to go and start some kind of dialogue and talk to these elements. And I wasn't surprised when the king tried to meet Dr. Shihabi, Saif Mishemi, and the rest of them, because I felt at that time he was forced to do it. Because without meeting these people, he will not get the green light to do the project. And I will bear witness to this, because at the time, I alerted the concerned parties, and I said to them, this is a serious. But at the time, the king, in fact, retreated for a bit, and now he's moving because he felt the time has come for him to do it. I will add only just a few points, because what I'm trying here to say that the Khalifa family at the moment are not really fighting for the two billion dollars of the revenue. They are fighting for the resources which cash in the bank, which is almost more than 220 billion dollars. Now I'm not going to mention the issue of land. Because land here, again as a resources, is being extracted and expanded the island for almost every year, reclamation and everything. And the transfer of the government assets to a private things. I'll try just to mention a few things. I'm not going to talk about the health, I'm not going to talk about education, because I brought all this here to you. I'm not going to talk about the $200 billion in the tourist section and who is controlling that, because that's available and we can do it later. But I will mention what's happened in terms of land and why the conflict is going to continue here. In 2005, the government earned as licenses from the people who is playing with the land 518 million Bahraini dollars, uh, Bahraini dinars. By 2006, that raised to 876 million. By 200 uh, by 2007, that 1.4 billion dinars. By 2008, that reached 1.5 billion dinars. And again, I challenge every single person of you that the issue of the land in Bahrain is going to be <coughs> as sensitive as the banks and who is controlling it. Let me now just try to conclude by mentioning an issue. What's going to happen? The future prospects of this duel of the Gulf. Because that's what I think is going to matter. And I request you to give me five minutes. Because I think, I don't want really to deny you that, but I think the future of the scenarios and what's available now is going to be a very serious issue. Several recent developments are likely to be significant for the short and the medium term political situation in Bahrain. The constitutional amendment will never be an issue as promised in 2006 election campaign and it will never be an issue in the 2010 campaign. Tarifat is going to deceive itself. It's been telling us in their election campaign that they are going towards prioritizing this issue because it will never happen. As anticipated, as a time the regime consolidated his power 
to restrict freedom both within the registered political societies and the informal ones in the interest of national security. The Constitution was intended at the time to give elements of control and influence to the people, but at the same time to contain opposition with a framework guided and controlled by the king. Despite the growing opposition in 2002 and 2006, this produced a period of apparent stability until the early months of 2008. With the insightful, I can be seen now that the underlying interest to secure economic interest and periodic conflicts dilemmas, because as we see, there is a periodic cycle of conflict in Bahrain. But the government and the ruling family at the time, they are trying to push these to the villages. They don't want them to come to the center of the financial uh, element because that's their interest. As the king became progressively less able to play the part which constitution required of him, both private business and the element within the ruling family, with their differing composition and interest, will come to play a more prominent role, making coherent governance even more difficult to achieve. And that is the reason. This time, the king came and be part of what is going on. In the past two or three years, he used to give himself like a space. Let them do the dirty work and I will give them, I will forgive them from time to time, 13 times in fact. This time he is in the lead because he knows within one year the deposits is almost dropped by $30 billion in Bahrain in 2008. He will never allow this because the financial interest they told him is straightforward, either to control Bahrain or to give it the chance to play the game. Because now we have more money than the GDP of your country for almost 20 times. In a way or another, we are party <coughs> to the stability of Bahrain. Now, assessing the overall post-election in 2010 to 2014, the post-election situation will indeed look deceptively familiar for all of us. In fact, al-Islam, or the reforms, era is coming to an end. Both the ruling family and the opposition coexistence changes, and the international community needs to urgently rethink strategies and find new ways to maintain pressure for peaceful conflict resolution. And we thought, must decide whether to adopt a more confrontational and extra parliamentary opposition, despite the prospect that any strict action may risk a very serious clamp from the government and the security forces. Leadership and party program issues are as much under review as tactics. And some old supporters are asking whether Amifat can and should survive in this present fall. Because the king and his allies, they are betting that Amifat after 2010 is not going to be the same. Some analysts have suggested that widening rifts within the ruling family and growing public disillusionment with the peaceful transition to stability are promoting the emergence of new alternative arrangements in Bahrain. During 2006 and 2007, there were reports of moves by the British and the American administration towards the creation of a third political force in the country, involved fragmented groups and some individuals who are highly critical to the government. This nucleus of new movement was reportedly a grouping of independent political candidates with support from the Minister of Interior, Sheikh Rashid, who is now playing this role by bringing this so-called independent. And now, for the first time, people are coming up as independent candidates, <coughs> and the independent candidates, in fact, have almost doubled the society's candidates in this election. And that's Rashid way of doing things. It is common platform was set to include demands for a new Prime Minister. The idea is to bring, to take away, to retire the current Prime Minister, bring Mohammed, uh, this, the current uh, Deputy Prime Minister, to be the Prime Minister, 
and scrapped the two primary legislatures by bringing one parliament and start to <coughs> move against corruption and bureaucracy. In recent prom session, which I attended just three weeks ago, in close in thanks of the British government, one of the official strategic planner referred to a new inclusive third way beyond the current boundaries, the so-called third force, which in fact to support an emergence of a lookalike Ahmed Shalabi in al -Bahrain. I know they are starting searching for this. And for the last two years, a young ambitious politician from a Arayat family is under grooming for the last two years for this job. Inter-negotiations with Bahraini different groups or appointment of an <coughs> able dynamic potential successor are no longer a viable option for the King Hamad. Not only because Bahrain has now reached a point of no return to sustainable stability, but also became because the required critical solution must focus not just on the ruling family, but also, or more importantly, on an independent, credible person broadly accepted by Bahraini people for the three-year transition period. I will give you the chance now, and I have around 10 pages. I will return them later on. Thank you very much.